Uh, let's do 100.05 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. This can be our last example for this example. And this will be the total. So let's say that starting from zero, we've added 100.05 total milliliters of sodium hydroxide to this same solution. And we want to find the pH. I'm sorry, let me interrupt you for a second. Which case did we just do in the handout? The uh, equal amounts of acid and base. For a strong acid and a strong base. You should mark in your handout that we saw how to deal with that. So if you have a strong acid and a strong base and you've added equal amounts of acid and base, it should be intuitive that you'll end up with a neutral solution, which has a pH of 7. We shouldn't round, right? Yeah. You can't round. So I made this problem too hard. Let's call this. Oh, mm. no. I already did it. No. Really? Did you finish it? You got an answer? Yeah. What did you get as your answer? That was fast. Yeah, so, um, so, what, so I'll just do it the way you did it. So you plugged in 0, .0 or what did you do your work? Mm. Oh, you just didn't, uh, all right, so you just didn't round. Okay, so this is going to come out to be 0 .0499. Where'd you go? 8. Reactive, so then I got this answer, and then I did this whole reaction, which is basically the same thing. 
the try the POH. Okay. They can love that. Mr. Jordan, what do you Nine point four? Is that what you got? Yep. Huh. Okay. I took this from the book, but they the, the book problem was um, way more complicated than it had to be because you can't round off at all here. Okay. This would have been a lot easier if I put in say one hundred and two milliliters or one hundred and five milliliters so that we didn't so that we can round off more in this case. But the important thing is to see the basic um, approach here. Um, Here's the way to do this probably easier. We basically know that it would take 100 of these milliliters to exactly cancel these 100 milliliters. Mm -hmm. So all we're going to have left is basically 0.05 milliliters of 0.1 sodium hydroxide. So you could just calculate directly um, that we would have here um, 0.05 milliliters times 0.1 moles per liter sodium hydroxide, and 0.05 is 0 0.0005. Um, and uh, then you could uh, figure out from that 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 was going to be 0.1, so that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 times 10 to the negative fifth. Uh, and then since we have basically um, 200 uh, milliliters, we would divide by 2 to get 2.5 over here. Okay, so this turned out to be a lot more complicated than I thought it was going to be. But anyway, the basic approach is, which of the cases did we work out here? Um, the one where less acid, less acid, more base. All right, so we've done all the cases from when we're combining a strong acid and a strong base. And where are we in our titration curve now? Well, we're somewhere like this, yeah. 9.4. So there's three different points that you might have to figure out for this type of titration curve. You have to figure out the y-intercept. You have to figure out the equivalence point, which is easy for a strong acid and strong base because it's seven. And we can figure out when we're past the equivalence point. Those are the three different types of points um, that you might have to work out uh, in this case. Um, 
And again, there's really two different cases. Because since we added more base than acid, after we were done, we were in the case where we just have a strong base by itself. And we already talked about how to deal with a strong base by itself. OK, well, like I said, um, you can see why people have trouble with acids and bases, because it just takes a really long time to go through all the cases. Yeah. Um, so unfortunately, a lot of these other cases down here are not the same as for a strong acid and a strong base. So there's still some um, important stuff to learn how to do, um, yet even apart from the polyprotic acids. So when you're combining a strong acid and a weak base, things are different um, than when you're just combining strong acids and strong bases. But um, the first thing I would do is just make sure you know how to do the cases we just did. Um, maybe doing those examples over again so that you don't get them confused with other cases that you might learn uh, as you go on. And don't forget to try to redo some of the examples that we did. Um, because I find it's, it's easy to start forgetting how to do all these different yeah. cases.